What's up, Mr. Fucking Desert Dime? <laughs> What is going on guys and welcome back to the channel. Thank you for hopping on another video with me. I hope you're having a great day because I'm gonna try my best too. So before I get into any sort of explanation, let me show you what we're working on today. Yes boys, the time is finally here. Desert Dime finally got some spindles. So these are the four inch lift spindles by Max Track. No, they're not brand new. I bought them used off offer up from somebody, but I ended up spraying them yesterday. And again, I'll get into the explanation in a little bit. But, um, so they look pretty good. I got the whole driver's side done yesterday. Here you go, let me give you guys a little side-by-side -side comparison here from the stock one to the one we are throwing in today or the one we threw in yesterday. But uh, the second one we're throwing in today, definitely a lot more beefier and it's definitely gonna be adding some lift, so that's great. So let me get into a little bit of an explanation of this video in general. So I recorded an entire video yesterday, but this project is so much more in depth and takes so much more time, especially if you're doing it alone, that yesterday, if I, if I post the footage I got yesterday, it's just gonna be really choppy. It's gonna be me trying to figure things out. It's gonna be me frustrated and not my, my, not my best self because it was just a very long day. So I, I thought, you know what? I got all the kinks out of the way. I worked it all through. Let's just scrap most of yesterday's footage and let's just start fresh and record tomorrow's today's footage and we'll make that the video. So what you guys are going to be seeing in today's video is footage from today, like this intro. You're going to be seeing some footage from yesterday that I just can't replicate today. And I'm going to be throwing in a lot of GoPro POV footage just because it's so difficult and time consuming and it just throws me off my rhythm when I'm like working on something that I have to stop, set all the wrenches down, pick up the camera, record, explain it to you, and then set it back down and just keep going back and forth. And I feel like you guys don't really get to see what I'm doing as well because it's super like up in the wheel well. So I threw a GoPro on a hat. You're really gonna get a POV shot because this hangs right in front of my face. I don't know if this is gonna frustrate me today because I won't be able to see past it. So yeah, this video is really gonna keep you on your toes because we're gonna be switching from camera shots from today, camera shots from yesterday, GoPro shots, and we're just gonna be walking through a little more in depth too. I think I'm gonna try to explain a little bit more, especially like what size wrenches I'm using. So before we jump into it, I wanna show you the tools that we're gonna be using for for today's project. Now, I don't know if I'm using every single one of these. This is just everything I had scattered on the floor when I came into the garage today. So I'm assuming most of this is getting used. So you have your basic socket, uh, sort of like mechanics toolkit here, but I had to run to the store yesterday and buy some extra sizes because they step up pretty large. We got a 24, 22, 19, 18, 17, 14, and this 10 is for the brake lines that we're gonna have to do. And again, it does step up in size, so I had to go buy some specialty sockets. We got a 22, a 24. Uh, this 7 8 was for a different project. I'm not sure if I actually use that today. Got some wire cutters, needle nose, normal pliers. This is gonna be uh, a ride height adjustment tool for the coilovers, which you'll see why we're using it. Uh, some of the hardware for the spindles, uh, brake lines, extended brake lines. Hammers, mallets, torque wrench, breaker bars, zip ties. So yeah, the, I mean, it's pretty basic tool stuff. You might need to go out and buy a few things if you're trying to do this yourself, but this is what we're gonna be using today. Yeah, that's pretty much it for my explanation. Guys, I hope you enjoy this video because this is probably one of the most stressful projects I've ever done and probably one that I'm most excited about to see the results. So without further ado, let's jump into this video. Yesterday. They look like brand new almost. These things look beautiful. Now with the spindles lifting us to a fixed four inch lift, I have no need for the preload set on this coilover right here, which is why we have the adjustment tool. So this is what it looks like now, what I've been riding on for the past five years. And we need the adjustment tool because I'm dropping all of the height out of the coilover and dropping all the preload. So I, I'm getting no height, uh, no additional height out of the coilover. I want all the height to come purely from the spindles because 
that's already four inches. I don't want to get too top heavy. I don't want the truck to look too goofy and too tall in the front. So we're just going to be running off the four inches from the spindle and we're going to let the suspension do what suspension does best. So right off the bat, the first few steps that you're going to have to do is disconnecting all the brake lines and all the ABS from the upper control arm, the spindle, uh, the bottom of the spindle, and just making them loose and getting them completely out of the way. Um, I had Tyler over yesterday. He was uh, gracious enough to work on this side for me while I was on the other side. So most of this looks to be disconnected. Yeah, everything's disconnected. You see the ABS is already unplugged. The only thing really holding it on is this bracket that we're gonna have to disassemble. And then once all this is taken off, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the brake line and throw in the extended brake lines. So actually before we go ahead and redo these brake lines i want to get the abs completely out of the way because this bleeds a lot of brake fluid everywhere and i don't want this getting all over the all over the abs so we're going to get a 10 millimeter and we're going to have to unbolt the abs from this bracket that also shares with the brake line then that disconnects right here but it's still got a clip in on the back side so we're going to take some needle nose and uh so I don't waste the time here. We're gonna take some needle nose, pop this clip out of the bracket. Then we're gonna get some wire cutters and cut all the zip ties, kind of holding it on in various places. And we're just gonna clean up this line and just get it completely free. Also, since I have these aftermarket upper control arms, there's a little bolt right here holding it in. I don't know what's on the stock one, but I'm sure there's something still holding it on the upper. I'm gonna disconnect from the upper, uh, clip the zip ties and pop out these brackets. Then the ABS will be completely free. I'll catch up with you in a second. All right, so I got the entire ABS cleaned up, nothing holding it on except up here in the top, behind the coil bucket, there's a 10 millimeter bolt that's doing another bracket right here. This is something that you could do later or up front, it doesn't really matter, but essentially it's gonna break uh, the ABS line free and give you a little more slack that's tucked up here in the engine bay. It's gotta go all the way down to the bottom of the spindle and plug in the bottom, so you need all the slack you can get. So you have to undo this bracket and let it flow completely free. All right, scratch that. On the other side, it's totally fine to just undo that whole bracket and take it off. But on this side, it looks like the actual harness, I'm assuming for the ABS, is attached to this bracket still and running down the back side of the coil bucket. So there's a little clip right here that's holding in the this side's ABS wire. So you can just undo that clip and free it that way. I'm gonna leave this bracket still attached because I don't wanna mess with that harness. But as you can see, ABS is completely out and it will hopefully droop. We'll see once we get the other spindle in far enough down. All right, so now it's time to attack the brake line. So we gotta pull out these two clips, top and bottom right here. No real easy way of doing it. I say just grab a pair of needle nose and try to slip them off as best you can. Then you're gonna need that special brake line tool that we talked about at 10 millimeter. And paired with this 10 millimeter with the stock lines, you can use a 17 to grab uh, the brake line itself. But then when you switch over to the extended, it's gonna move up to an 18. So let's go ahead and try to attack this. This bottom clip was not budging. I was smashing my hand on everything. So I just got a little bit of tri-flow. I don't have WD-40 or I would have used that, but I just kind of like gently dripped it in behind so it lubricated the backside slid right out. So now I can go ahead and pull these brake lines. And before we do that, let's try to stop as much of a mess as we can. No need to clean up a whole mess if you can prevent it. Oh boy. Why does it sound like a cop's here, but I know it's not? <laughs> Look at this dude, I didn't even call him today. <laughs> okay, hold on, I can't focus on that right now. I gotta do this. You did good on this side, aside from not tightening the collar. Yeah, and tightening the collar's not gonna be too big of a problem. It's just more tedious than anything, which frustrates me. It's, I just hate. A bigger screwdriver. This side. What? There's your tightening. Check it out. All right. So we got the new extended brake line in. We just got to tighten both points, which I might do in a little bit. Like I said, it's coiling a little weird since it's longer now. So I want to make sure it's in a good position for compression and uh, full droop. But once those are tightened, then we're going to slide our clips back in so it's staying in place so we can move on with the next step. 
All right, so now that we got the extended brake line in, we can pull the caliper off and get it off to the side. I have zip ties set up ready to grab it, so I'm not trying to juggle that while <laughs> stringing it up like I did last time. And all we have to do is there's just, there's just two 17 millimeter bolts on the backside and it's completely free. Oh, not bad, dude. Honestly, one of my favorite installs was doing my rotors and brake pads. It was so easy, so fast. Ah. This needed one good smack. I'm careful with my new babies. Drilled and slotted. R1 drill and slotted R1 concepts little plug for my other video. <laughs> you want to go put this on the other table? Uh, yeah, I'm going for the tie rod next. You already got the pin out. Take your control arm off. What size is this? 19? Probably a 19. Yeah. Ah. Life would be much easier too if this bumper wasn't here. <laughs> well, we could do a nice little tooth bumper. We could. Dude, if I learn how to weld and wire, I would be unstoppable. All right, so a nice little 19 millimeter. We'll get this, uh, I'm blanking on the name, Castle Nut. You know what? I think I'm gonna go ahead and take this hub off first so I can easy, easily hammer it. So we got the pin and the Castle Nut out of this, but like I said, we're gonna have to get this dust shield off and just take the whole hub off so we have more room to play with. Then we can hammer this out. So on the back side, we just need a rock of 17 millimeter to break all four of these. He's using big brain moves. Big brain moves. Have the leverage do the work for you. Well, you don't even need the wrench to break it. You just need big muscles. Yeah, I ain't got those. I don't either, but sometimes I do. It looks like a frustrating thing that these don't come all the way out, you know? Because they're stuck behind. But it seems like one of the most peaceful things I've ever taken off a truck for some reason. Because <laughs> it's like just a perfect square. Just all four of them, they gotta work together to get out. No, no, no. We're just hitting it all the way around. <laughs> well, got it. <laughs> we just gotta go around the world a little. Around the world. All right, so now that we got the whole hub off, we have more room to play with right here and hammer out uh, the tie rod. And right here, you can see this is where the ABS sensor connects. It's a little 10 millimeter bolt. Um, you don't have to unplug it, you could just unbolt the whole thing. And then once this is out. Ooh. There, there you, you go. go. You gotta hammer the shit out of it. <laughs> you do. Perfect. Okay, so yeah, we use a 19 millimeter on the bottom. There's just two bolts on each side of the spindle. Jesus, drift truck? I know, dude. I got the drift angles. I'm gonna break those loose, and once we get those off, then we're gonna be able to just take off the top, uh, the part connecting. Sorry, my elbow's in your face. <laughs> we'll be able to take off the part connected to the upper control arm, then the whole spindle should just fall out. It's perfect thing. We're done with this now. Boom. Boom. Okay, now's the fun part. Because everything comes out. And it looks so beautiful. Smack it up. <laughs> I did it the right way yesterday, okay. All right, well now that we got everything disassembled, the last thing to do is, since I have to adjust the ride height, um, I have to adjust the ride height. Actually, I don't have to take the shock out like I did last time. <laughs> Are you going back that way? Because it's pushing the collar that way. Right way. Mm -hmm. Get that in there. <sighs> All right. Well, we finished the collar adjustment. We got that. No preload now. Now no we just have. Now we just have to slide. It's kind of like a sandwich now. Instead of just going over the top and bolting in, the new spindle sandwiches. And it, wait, no, it comes with its new hardware. Yeah, so where's the hardware for it? <laughs> Just got to that part of the speaking. <laughs> Here's the second washer. Pours out so fast. The red one's like a gel. This one's like pure liquid. liquid. I got it everywhere last night. Oh, see, there we go. Oh, 
I thought this was gonna be a lot more GoPro shots because I thought I was alone, Phil. <laughs> this is making my life so much easier on so many different levels. Would you care for a mallet? Hold on, my fingers are stuck. There we go. See, this is some of the stuff that I was cussing out and complaining about yesterday at like seven o'clock at night, trying to do these three by myself. The uh, bottom two aren't bad. This is This is moving so much faster than I thought. It's not even one yet. We're already almost done. So I think, what do I have to do? I have to throw this cap back on, tighten the castle nut on the tie rod, throw the hub, rotors, calipers back on, and the ABS sensor, and I think we're done. Bleed your brakes. Oh yeah, I have to bleed my brakes too. Shit. Oof. We're just cooking. We're cooking through this. Oh yeah, can you grab that Loctite too? V8 swap. I'm waiting until this motor blows. <laughs> then do a V8 swap. All right, so you just need a wrap of 19 millimeter around the uh, castle nut on the bottom here, tighten her up, and then you have to line up with the hole for the pin to go back into. Then I think, well, attach the ABS. That's next. Time for my R1 concept drilled and slotted rotor to go back on. <laughs> Pass me three of those lugs. Yeah, I gotta plug myself, plug my own videos. Speaking of plugging, who, who should they subscribe to? Oh, okay. Like, comment, subscribe, desert down. There's my plug for the video. Okay. Let's get her back on, buddy. I can't see with this GoPro in the way whose idea was this. Okay. It's directly in front of my line of sight. Right, the entire wheel wells pieced back together. Everything's bolted down, everything's torqued down, and everything looks beautiful. This brake line looks better on this side than that side. This one's yeah. less sketchy to me. <laughs> like the other one like coils right near where the bump stop is. I'm scared it's gonna get sandwiched, but this whole side's done. The last thing we need to do is bleed the brake lines for the front since we got new lines in. He's already got the whole thing set up. He's prepped, he's ready to go. Moment of truth to see if the jack now goes high enough to get the wheels and tires on and off. Huh? I don't think it's high enough. <laughs> I really don't think it's high enough. It's okay, I got blocks. Yeah, no. Pro Eagle sponsorship. No, Harbor Freight sponsorship. <laughs> I wonder why Harbor Freight doesn't have its own race team. I don't know. Most race teams actually use their shit too. Dude. This thing looks nasty now at full droop. That's right at it. What are you talking about? <laughs> this thing looks... Freaking nasty at full droop. Dude, that's crazy. Wait, why does that look so aggressive now? Dude, this thing is crazy. This is like as tall as me. This is up to my throat almost. Yeah. Dude, at full droop, this thing's at my throat. This is, I, I don't think I've gotten this excited for any install, honestly. <laughs> Like, it was more so like, all right, cool, it's done. Now I can enjoy the oh, truck. This one has like the most visible reward. I wasn't as excited with the drilled and slotted R1 concept rotors. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. This thing looks like it eats now. I mean, the skid plate's not on yet, but that'll cover up a little bit more of it. But dude, that looks insane. I just realized that I have the skid plate off and I have black paint, so I can actually cover up all those rusty scratches for once. <laughs> That's so funny. How you can just make anything look like it's not beat to shit. Just with some paint. Look at that, you can't even see the scratches or the dents. I mean, you can, but shh. 
I just wanted to show you guys real quick and I'll explain more once I get home, but this is how my steering wheel is sitting right now to drive straight. I'm literally going straight and my steering wheel is sitting like this. But yeah, I'll explain more once I, once I get home right now. Okay, there's just enough daylight to record the ending of this video, guys. Thank you so much for sticking through all this. It's definitely been a process for sure, but um, I just wanna go over a few things with how the truck sits now. First of all, this thing looks amazing. It looks like a, an off-road vehicle again. Like, it just sits so high in the front and I love it, my God. Second of all, that clip you guys just saw of my steering wheel being cocked 90 degrees, it's because I definitely goofed up and look at the toe on this wheel. This is, this is straight. This is, my steering wheel is straight, the other wheel, uh, tire is straight, but look how far this one's turned. It's like l aiming this way. And here's why. Because yesterday when we first started this project, I was sitting inside doing something and Tyler goes to crack the first nut and when he pulls it, it yanked the whole steering, uh, the whole steering assembly to the passenger side and it cranked the steering wheel about 90 degrees. So the problem lies with last night after the long stressful day, I was going to put the tie rod back in and it wasn't lining up with the hole. And in my mind I thought, oh that's weird, maybe you have to extend both ends to now match the, because uh, it extends it 0.75 on each side. So I thought, oh maybe I just need to extend the tie rod to fit it now. Not thinking, oh that I have to turn everything back to the passenger side because that's how it was when I disassembled it. So I extended the tie rod for it to be lined up straight when it should have been turned all the way to the passenger. So I just extended this whole side and pushed it outward, towed it outward mindlessly because I had forgot about that in the beginning of the day. So the alignment is completely trashed right now. But now my dash light is on. I have a slip indicator light. It looks like the traction control off light, but it's just, it doesn't say off. It's just the, the car with the two little skid marks behind it. Now that's on solid and I'm like, oh my God, what is that from? Is that from the ABS sensors? Like, did I break a clip or like cut a wire or something? But I'm thinking it might be because of this alignment. Cause my, like Tyler explained to me, my steering wheels turned completely sideways 90 degrees, but my truck's going forward. So the computer system's freaking out like, dude, what is going on? So I scheduled an alignment for tomorrow morning at LTW. I'm hoping once I get the alignment fixed, that light will go off. So then my alignment will be fixed, my light will be off. And then there's only one problem left to do, or one problem left to fix uh, more so, which is the ride height adjustment. They're not the same on both sides, mainly because I did one side, Tyler did the other. We just weren't kind of synced up. It's just slightly higher, slightly higher on the passenger side. I can go back on the driver's side and just raise it just a little bit so it's even, but that's one more thing that I need to fix. So I need to fix the ride height adjustment, I need to get it aligned tomorrow morning, and hopefully that light will get fixed with the alignment. Oh, and one more thing I wanted to mention, I measured at the beginning, um, trying to see how much room from the middle of the wheel to the fender, and it was 22 inches, and then I measured today, and it was at 26, and I thought, how is it four, how is it a four inch difference? Because in my mind, I thought, the spindle, although it's a fixed four inches, I thought it was gonna subtract the difference from what the coilovers were already raising it. I didn't know that it was gonna be four inches over whatever else is going on. So it gives four inches whether you have a stock coilover, whether you have a uh, aftermarket lift coilover. So it, it lifts it no matter what. It's gonna be four inches no matter what you're sitting at, no matter what you have lifting it already. So I didn't really think that. So I got four inches of lift out of this when I thought I was only gonna get an inch and a half. So, four inches of lift, 0.75 on each side track width. I'm getting a little more travel out of it because of that 0.75 on each side. I just love this. I don't know why it took me so long to do this. I don't know why I was so against it in the beginning, but I'm so glad I finally did it. And I highly encourage any of you who are off-roading and see a need for it to do it as soon as possible. It is totally worth it, I'm telling you. Guys, thank you for sticking around in this video. That's all I have for you today. I need to get going because I have to go edit this video because it comes out tomorrow morning and then tomorrow afternoon, I'm gonna be uh, working on the truck again at Tyler's shop. We are replacing the body mount bushings and I'm gonna be throwing those on tomorrow and then we have that video coming out, I think, Sunday. So guys, stay tuned, subscribe if you're not already and I will catch you in the next one.